This is the epidemic of my generation. This is my HIV, this is my black plague. Oklahomans are dying from this preventable and treatable disease on a daily basis. I think Oklahoma is in a crisis they don't realize they're in. Uh, they seem to think that the opioid addiction is still something that's out in other places. It's not, it's here. Oklahoma and that's a documentary that you can watch, a seven part documentary uh, produced here locally. We're gonna talk to the guys behind the camera and behind the brain trust here of Killing Pain, again, a seven part documentary that's coming out, released uh, today, in fact. Joining me here in the Oklahoma's video studio, Reggie Witten. We've had him many times in studio. Always good to see you, sir. Thanks, Dave. Uh, we should mention that you are with uh, FATE, Fighting Addiction Through Education. You are the founder of that yes. organization. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, Derek Watson and Nick Jones, the co-producers, the guys in front of, behind of, the production of this, which I want to dive into because it's a really well done documentary uh, about the opioid addiction and Reggie, why is this film needed? Well, a lot of people don't realize what is facing our state and our country. This is unprecedented. It is the world's largest man-made epidemic. It's entirely created, uh, and it was created for the purpose of making pharmaceutical companies a lot of money, billions of dollars. And they did this on the backs of innocent people. Very few people know these opioids are essentially heroin pills. The, the molecule we're talking about here is one of the most addictive molecules in the world. And um, so what we have created here now is an epidemic that is staggering. We lose more people in one year than to overdoses from opioids than we lost in the entire Vietnam War. That's an incredible number. Over 300,000 Americans have died but millions and millions have become addicted and they don't even, they're not even able to get treatment for this. Getting addicted to opioids, to me, I, I would rather my children have AIDS than be addicted. It's so much harder to treat addiction. In many instances, it can be a, a lifelong endeavor trying to get off these. So what we wanted to do was bring this situation to the attention of everybody in Oklahoma and hopefully people outside of Oklahoma and try to talk about how to solve the problem, which we do. It's a seven part series and we talk about how we got here and we talk about, you know, how to get out of it. Tell me more about Faith, the fighting addiction through education. You're the founder of that. Yes, we, uh, we decided that, and we don't have all the answers, but we decided that education is the key. Before you can tackle any problem, you have to understand your enemy and you have to understand it well enough to deal with it. And education really is the key. And so we're trying to, to educate people all over the state of Oklahoma. I lost my oldest son to this uh, 16 years ago and have been traipsing around the state speaking to kids and educators and policymakers. 16 for, years ago, as I interrupt you there, opioids yeah. is kind of like the buzzword right now in the media the past maybe three, five years. Yeah. That indicates Oh yeah. There's a long tail here. Well, if you look backwards, prior to 1996, we didn't have an epidemic. In fact, the sale of opioids was flat. Opioids are a very good drug for two things. They're very good for end of life care if you have cancer, very good for that. If you have a broken leg, and what they call an acute injury, very good drug. Opioids are not supposed to and never were designed for long-term usage. Like things like fibromyalgia and back problems, and migraines, they absolutely were never designed for that. And we've actually had some prior epidemics. You know, uh, the Chinese fought a, a couple of wars over opioids. And indeed, after the Civil War, we had hundreds and hundreds of Civil War veterans who got addicted to opium. And that epidemic went away. And then there was no epidemic for over 100 years. Along comes 1996, and all of a sudden, doctors around the country and around the state were lied to. They were lied to by Big Pharma, and they were told these drugs are no longer addictive. That was not true then. It's not true now. One of the leaders of this movement, Purdue Pharmaceuticals, actually three of their executives pled guilty to intentionally misbranding. So there's no question about what they did. 
The question is, how are we going to get out of this mess? It may take 50 years for our country to get out of this. It's a trillion dollar problem for the country. And for Oklahoma, it's a billion dollar problem. So the key is education. And that's why we started FATE. And, you know, we're just going to do the best we can. And this movie was designed to bring attention to the problem. Which brings in these gentlemen right here with Lampstand. And they uh, have an office, at least one office, over in the uh, Film Row area. Uh, I was there the day you interviewed my boss, Kelly Fry, from yeah. the Oklahoma. And you have many voices in this film. We saw Senator James Lankford in the clip that we just played there. Uh, but there were many leaders, movers and shakers of various ranks. In this episode, when you guys had a conversation, you come out of that thinking, how do we tell the story? What was behind your thinking process of how you would tell the story? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So we've, we've actually worked with Reggie on several projects um, over the last almost decade, um, several different nonprofit endeavors, and we work with nonprofits and corporations to help tell their stories all the time. Um, one of the things that that Reggie brought to us and the team at FATE was, okay, we want everyone to consume this. We want everybody um, to, to uh, join this conversation um, about addiction and specifically to the opioid crisis. And so instead of doing a feature length film, which we've done um, dozens of, uh, we, we really wanted to go through a, kind of a digital model, a digital distribution model through uh, Facebook and YouTube um, directly to the public so that people can consume this media on their phones and make it as easy as possible for them. So that's why we broke this film up. It's about an hour long um, into seven different episodes that really start to, to tackle the issue in seven, seven different ways. Um, and so hearing from government leaders uh, to business leaders to um, uh, law enforcement leaders across our state and then experts um, as well with, with personal stories tied into it. We wanted to make sure that that people could um, consume this story and engage with it in, in the easiest way possible. Nick, how long have you guys been uh, producing this? Wow, uh, I believe we started this a little over a year and a half ago, really um, diving in deep on the on the research and trying to put all the pieces together. As you mentioned, there's a there's quite a few voices in this film, and trying to organize those schedules and get everybody yeah. in and pick those up took quite a quite a bit of time. And we also wanted to make sure as we were researching this, we Part of what we love about documentary films is quickly trying to become as close to experts as we can, and so there was there was a lot of time up front just trying to make sure we could wrap our, our heads around how big of an epidemic this really is, and, and where Oklahoma places nationwide um, in the crisis. Reggie, you've been involved in the process here. You've seen it. How well does it tell the story? Well, it's. Uh I'm a little bit biased, but I think it's as good as any documentary film ever made. Um, I love Oklahoma. I was born here in Oklahoma and raised here in Oklahoma, and I love Oklahoma people. These guys do not live in Hollywood, but they're Hollywood quality filmmakers. They really are. It's a, just an incredible film, and it's fascinating to me to see how they weave all the pieces and all the very complex evidence together. Um, so. I, I really encourage, I hope every Oklahoman sees the film and, and dialogues with us. There's a, there's a way to communicate back to us on the uh, website, killingpain.com. People can give us their feedback and, um, and even we direct people to where to go for help. What have the comments been like so far, guys? It's, it's been really, um, it's really been eye-opening and, and exciting and rewarding. There are a lot of people who have who have attached themselves saying, hey, this is my story. Um, you know, the, the thing about this addiction um, epidemic is, specifically with opioids, is that it can affect any one of us, and it does affect every one of us. Um, none of us are, are removed or immune from this, from a loved one or a family member or a friend who, who has struggled with this addiction. But any one of us are, you know, uh, uh, an accident away from being prescribed a, a, an incredibly addictive drug. Um, and so I think when people watch this and consume this, um, you know, some of the comments have been, you know, hey, that's my story, you know, drug, you know, people in recovery with addiction don't always look like, um, you know, the, the, the quintessential sure. sort of um, person, person street, struggling yeah. with addiction, um, that this is every single one of us. And this is, um, I mean, from, uh, from every socioeconomic, uh, you know, uh, range in our, in our state. And so it's been incredible to see that kind of outpouring. And, and we just need more people to engage and share uh, with the story and, and share, uh, you know, their stories and, uh, and this story in particular to get the conversation out. The website, as Reggie mentioned, fate.org does include uh, resources and some programs, so it does uh, dive into some of the uh, potential places you can find answers. 
Again, you can watch the documentary at killingpain.com. And I want to get back to Lampstand. Lampstand.tv is their website. To Reggie's point about the quality of this documentary, it really is well done, guys. Uh, the, from the color scheme to the composition to the simplicity of the interviews, but the in-depth visuals and links that you must have gone to to illustrate some of these, such as putting a small light bulb in front of a lens <laughs> to create a certain look. How would you guys brainstorm, okay, we, we need it to look and feel this way? Well, we, we have a fantastic team at Lampstand, uh, fantastic art director Brian Clark that worked from the very beginning to try to come up with um, all of the the graphics to illustrate the problem. You know, we, when we first started out with this, the information, a lot of this information is out there, but charts and graphs go so far, so we can put together a special commission, but Oklahomans aren't gathering around the TV to see what's coming out of the State House. So we have to be able to create a compelling story, um, get something that is engaging, and take these stats, make them real. And so our art direction uh, from the very beginning, we worked on how to make that engaging. We have a, a fantastic cinematographer um, at Lampstand, Nick Dillard, that worked on visually how can we how can we show some of the effects of opioids? How can we communicate that to people that maybe don't understand necessarily so um, like, what someone goes through? It's so like this look here on the front page of the Oklahoman, where you have a, a kind of a silhouette look throughout the video. Then there's this graphic visual of a brain, you know, kind of yes. superimposed, if you will, over that. Yes, we. Uh, it was it was interesting the last year or so our art director when I would go into his office he's spending more time listening to neuroscience uh, talks and trying to break down medical papers uh, than create mood boards because to be able to you know illustrate how these how uh, it affects these synapses in the brain and how the brain responds he had to do a pretty deep dive um, but we're really we're really proud with how he was able to illustrate that at the end of the day uh, unfortunately, in this case, it's good to hear that the comments are actually legitimate, even though they're, they're sobering comments um, sometimes that the trolls can invade various things yeah, online. there's always, obviously that. Yeah. It, it, but it's nice that this uh, allows for some conversation yeah. as well. Yeah, and that's what, we, that's what we want. You know, the stigma around addiction um, is part of, the, part of the reason that keeps people from getting the treatment that they need. And so um, the more that we talk about this and bring this out of the shadows, uh, the, the easier it is for all of us to, to fight this crisis. And it is, it is winnable. It, there is hope in this. Um, we just need to come, come together and realize that this is the largest public health crisis that we're facing today. And come together as Oklahomans, as we always do um, in times of crisis, to, to work together and, and put, something, uh, put resources in where, where they need to be um, so that we can find a solution and get people the help they need. Well said, Reggie. Sir, I'll give you the final word here. What's, what's the takeaway that you want people to, to know the most about this program here? Well, I second what Derek said about hope. One of the major comments I'm getting from people, um, you know, I get a call, one or two calls a week from parents I don't even know talking about their kids needing help and how they act in a manner that they just can't believe. Uh, addiction will make will make children and make parents do incredible things and this film helps show why this these chemicals take over the brain they change the chemistry of the brain and this film explains that and it explains how to get the brain to change back and there is hope but you can't really deal with this till you understand it and I think we've given hope to uh, you know thousands of parents across the state who can see why maybe their children are behaving in this way. And uh, we're giving them an avenue to find a way to, to make it through what is the most difficult uh, journey of all. Reggie Wooden, Derek Watson, and Nick join, Jones joined us here on the set for this conversation. Killing Pain, the documentary, you can watch online at killingpain.com. You can learn more about fate at fate.org. Gentlemen, again, well done on this, uh, and thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you.